Time.com. I don't know if she did that right or not. But we're going to be more enthusiastic this time. We're going to be really enthusiastic. Hopefully. We've had our alka seltzers and a I half didn't. a bottle of ibuprofen, so we're raring to go. Hold up, Facebook. Let me get on Facebook to see if we're even live. Just to make sure. Is anybody on Facebook yet? Okay, we have 102 people on Facebook. Oh, we have a couple watching. We didn't scare all of you away last time. Okay, uh, we're live on YouTube now. We're on YouTube? Hello, Phyllis Supa. <laughs> You're the first one. Hi, guys. I'm, I'm kind of stalling till we get everybody up and running on YouTube and everything. You think we got everybody? Except I'm hearing echoes. Oh, sorry, that was I accidentally. That's so we got everybody? Uh, yeah, not not very many on face oh YouTube yet. So I need yeah, two. I could dance on the Four. table or something exciting. We still have like one person watching one. So we have um, Tar and Mike. For those of you who have just started, Tar and Mike and BJ and Ellie are in Mayo. And we've got some good news this evening, a little bit on their doctor's appointments. We'll talk about that a little bit later when everybody gets on and when we get finished with talking about the refrigerator. Tonight we're going to talk about organizing. Yeah, here's the one that's doing it all behind the scene. Nan's, Nan's just the pretty one, isn't she, Dave? <laughs> You're the smart one, huh? Doing yeah, this. but Dad and Ellie and BJ are, I have to crouch for this, yep. um, <laughs> Dad and Ellie and BJ <laughs> are at the Mayo Clinic, and Mom is too, and so Mom, Dad, Ellie, and BJ, that's four, I thought five people, no. oh, four, four people are there, um, <laughs> they went there because, you know, BJ's whole Lyme disease, sickness, and all that, they're stuff. getting appointments for that and everything, yeah. so, Dave, We'll update you. Yeah, we'll later. update you and tell you the information they have so, mar so far because he went to his first appointment today. Um, I do have a couple of announcements that I want to make, and I might make this uh, again a little bit later on in the show. But um, excuse me for a second. Michael's going to have a fit because I'm letting the dog in. <laughs> so, But um, we're having a going to Mayo sale. Um, and it's our ebooks. They're ten dollars. I'm not sure how many's in that packet, but Dave or Jamie can maybe put the link up for you. Um, all of the ebooks are in. All of the ebooks e are in it for ten dollars, which I'm is a gonna really put the good link buy. In. And our ebooks, we don't. I don't think we push them quite as much as we maybe should. It's kind of like dine, small dining on the dimes, but on different subjects. And we we put a lot of information in there that people don't always cover for these types of subjects and we try to come up with some unusual different ideas. For example, in our laundry, a lot of people don't realize in our laundry uh, packet that we have where it talks about laundry and that type of things, we have recipes for homemade spray starch, we have recipes for homemade fabric softener, we have recipes for of course the laundry detergent, but even things like this uh, linen water that you spray when you iron to scent your clothes and that type of thing. So we cover a lot of stuff in these ebooks. Just, you know, quite a bit of information. But if the sale is going on through uh, June 3rd, which is, I think, this Saturday. So we've got that sale going on. And also, I might mention this again later on in the show, but Saturday, Tar and Mike are going to do a meetup in Rochester. So what we need is for anybody who's in Rochester to give them, after the show is over, go to YouTube and in the comments write down a place that you think would be a good place for a meetup because they're not familiar with Rochester but you do it after the show is over in the comments in YouTube or you can go to the website livingonadime.com and click on contact and then write in there uh, where you think a good meetup would be and they will tomorrow I think they're going to do post it tomorrow do some kind of a, a thing but it's going to be, it would be like really short notice, so they post it like 30 minutes before they decide. Yeah, they won't know what time tomorrow, but they, they're they going to try to post it tomorrow. Where the meetup's going to be, it's going to be at 3 o'clock on Saturday, but they're not sure where yet. So, I feel like a home ec teacher who's giving the classroom their announcements right before 
she t teaches the lesson. I've got a whole list of stuff that I'm supposed to be telling you guys. Taryn might call to let me uh, have me tell the other thing. Uh, yes, I did. I did all of that. Put him on speaker if you need to. Yeah. Hold up, I'm trying to see if we're back because everything says we're back now. Are we back? Can anybody give us a thumbs up if we're back? Uh, yeah, it looks like you're back. I'm back? Uh, should be. Let me find the stream. Panic level is going down. We're back. Yes, I did. We've got Mike on the phone with Dave. <laughs> Trying to figure it out. Well, it's not showing over here. That's weird. We don't know if we're on or not on. If you can give us a thumbs up, that would help everybody. She's already asking that. Hey, Facebook, give us a thumbs up if we're live again. We give kinda... us... A thumbs up if you could, because we crashed and burned there for a minute. Yeah, we see lots of thumbs up there. Okay, so we're on. I'm just not supposed to be talking about Memorial Day for some reason, because I forgot it on Monday. I felt really bad. And Wait, I come from a military family. So Memorial Day, no, Veterans Day, those it's types it's of things are very, very important to me. And... I told my mom about it and she said, well, you know, that won't hurt to mention it on Wednesday because people really need to think about it more than just one day a year of what our, our servicemen and women have done for us over the centuries even, you know, for our country. And um, like I said, my dad retired from the military and when I got married, my husband was in the military. And I really want you to remember, it's hard for me to even talk about it because at one point, Fitzsimmons Hospital was where I went. It's a military hospital in Denver, and that's where I went and had all my medical stuff done a lot of times because we were in the military. And this was in, like, the late 60s. And I would go to Fitzsimmons, and I would see the servicemen coming back from Vietnam and some of the things they'd gone through. And then I would drive home to Boulder. I lived in Boulder, Colorado which was the hot spot for all the hippies and the people that were against the war. And I would see them burning our flag, stomping it in the mud, uh, desecrating the whole area, throwing nasty, rotten vegetables, anything they could find at our servicemen coming home from the war. And it broke my heart, it really did. Your daughter-in-law is on. Hi, Shayla. <laughs> Hi, Shayla. And it, it broke my heart to see that, to go from one place to see the servicemen and then to the hippies doing all this stuff, claiming their rights, demanding their rights. And I see people demanding, we're Americans, we do have so many rights, but with those rights goes responsibilities. And it frustrates me when people badmouth or condemn those that are trying to fulfill the responsibility so that they can have their rights. So remember our servicemen, when you go to bed at night, you thank God that you've got men and women that are willing to protect you and sacrifice even their life to do that. So I just wanted to say that tonight before we start the show, and I know it has nothing to do with organizing the refrigerator, but I wanted to cover that. We will take questions and uh, uh, more comments when I get done because I'm just going to try to go through doing the refrigerator and it'll be hard for me to answer too many questions and, and see what's going on while I'm doing the refrigerator. And then after I get that done, I'll sit down and we can answer some of the comments and questions that you have at that point. So several asked me the other night if I would show how to organize a refrigerator. And so I'm going to be brave and open Tara's refrigerator. Actually, to be honest, hers isn't too bad. First of all, though, I want to start out with the outside of the, the type of refrigerator. If you're, if you're thinking about buying a refrigerator, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. Every, most everybody, or a good portion of everybody, has side-by-side -side refrigerators. And um, Tara loves hers. A lot of people loves her. My daughter-in-law loves hers. Everybody really likes them. I don't. I can't use one because I have a lot of recipes that call for um, putting things on a cookie sheet, 
a jelly roll pan, that type of thing, and put them in the refrigerator to freeze them or to um, cool them off. So I have to have an, a freezer across the top or on the bottom. I like those best. I think Uncle is on. Is my son on there? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Hi, David, David George. <laughs> and so I like the ones with the freezer on top or on the bottom. Sometimes people don't like the freezer on the top, that type of thing, because they don't have many shelves often. I solve that problem by getting the, the little metal racks that you could put dishes in the cabinet. You put them in the cabinet and then you stack your dishes above and below. I put a couple of those in my freezer so that gives me more shelf space in there. But you see, my refrigerator has now almost this amount of width inside of it where this refrigerator only has this much. So when you get into them, you kind of have to dig around. Um, I can move the milk to one side if I need to get behind something behind it. In this refrigerator, you can't do that. It's so packed side to side. So the kids are pulling and yanking things out, trying to get to something in the back, and then they jumble things back in there again. And so that's why I kind of like the ones that don't have the side by, um, the side by side. Another thing too with the freezer ones, a lot of people say, well, you have to kind of bend over, but really I don't notice it in a whole lot more because I am shorter, so that might make a difference of having to bend over. But you've got to think too, if you are, yeah, Dave's standing up because he's taller. He's show, trying to be smart so he's taller than Nan. But you've got to think too, if you have like four kids, little kids in the family, you've got two tall people and four little people. And so you, it's actually easier for the kids in the family then, and usually they're the ones, you've got four of them compared to two of them, and they're the ones that's often getting in there more often. And I'm gonna open Tars, and it's really not bad. Hers isn't that bad. Uh, we've been eating out of it for the past few days, so we've cleared a lot out. But what I was talking about with the kids, making sure the refrigerator is shorter for them, I noticed the other day Jack was trying to put the milk up here. First of all, the milk's heavy. And um, so he was trying to reach from down here to get it up there and he was shaking and he had it leaning like this and he was going to stead, kind of steady it and then shut the door real fast. That's uh, almost a disaster waiting to happen. And so that's why I say having the shelves down lower sometimes helps a little bit. My grandkids can get into my refrigerator real easy and get things out. And like if I'm cooking, I say, Dave, can you go get this for me? He can run over and open it and be able to reach it really good. Well, now uh, I'm so tall. It and now you're so tall, you can reach anything. Also, sorry, I didn't mean to dodge the camera. But with this milk, if you do have a taller refrigerator, for the grandkids and my kids both, Take a small pitcher. This happens to be a teapot. You could use just any kind of a small pitcher. Pour some of the milk into it. Keep it on a lower shelf then for the kids to use to pour on their cereal. You don't have the heavy weight, um, or if they spill it, you only spill a small pot instead of this whole big jug of, you know, stuff in the refrigerator. Now, Tars isn't really, like I said, too bad. I want to show first, Dave, we're going to have to, and I hate to do this to you, but can we tilt the camera down first to show yeah. them down here? I cleaned out one section down here, and let me show you. This is Tara's, the way a lot of people do in here, and I don't know if you can see, but all the dirt and little crumble things in there. Yeah, it's kind of difficult. Is it hard to see? But in this has a lot of dirt, crumbles, little scraps from the food. In here, when I cleaned it out, I just took the whole bin out, washed it in the sink, then I put paper towels right down, lay, one layer of paper towels, and I put the apples in it. That way, next time I go to clean it, instead of having to take the whole bin out and wash it and everything, I'll just gather up those paper towels and toss them in the trash and replace them. And I only have to do that, even when the kids were at home, I only had to do that like once a month or every other month. Sometimes I can even gather up the paper towel, shake the crumbs off, and replace it. Another thing, in here I found a partial bag of apples that were totally rotten. So sometimes it's better to take everything out of the bag once you open the bag up and spread the fruit and stuff out. That way the kids can see what's in there easier. And if something starts to spoil, 
then you can uh, pick it out right away because once an apple or something starts spoiling, it's it can ruin the whole batch in there. Now, um, do you want to go up? Yes. Would you please go up, Dave? Thanks. Now, one of the biggest mistakes. Oh, I didn't take my mode. I am not an alcoholic. I have to tell everybody. This is my. I haven't ever mentioned this on the show. I should. This has blueberry juice, strawberry juice, and I take it a lot to help me with my chronic fatigue. I'm not sure if I should even recommend it yet, so that's why I haven't ever mentioned it, but it has a lot of, it's a fruit juice stuff that's supposed to help, but I have that in there. But anyway, this refrigerator is actually very perfect to show what, <laughs> I'm sorry, daughter of mine, to show what not to do, <laughs> because most everybody does this type of thing. The duct tape. Uh, the, du the duct tape, yeah. <laughs> Tar duct tape's a lot of things to fix them. But if you'll notice here, I've got a salad dressing here. I've got three salad dressings here. There's another salad dressing down there. And there's another salad dressing in the, in the lettuce bin. <laughs> you know, um, so here's some uh, sauce, hot sauce here. Here's another hot sauce. Uh, here's jelly here, there's jelly down, a couple of jellies down there. Pickles are here, there's the ketchup, but the mustard's down there. What I'm trying to show you is, you need to have like things together. And I'm going to take this apart. Bas and, huh? Basically, Mom has salad dressing in her fruit drawer, the vegetable drawer. <laughs> and on every drawer, shelf, she wanted to be handy. <laughs> she wanted to be handy. I'm going to, uh, and like here's the jalapeno peppers. I usually try to keep like pickles, all the pickles and things like the jalapeno peppers together. So oh, I may I not, huh? This is pretty smart, yeah. And so I'm not going to be able to put the whole thing from top to bottom and get it all, but all together, but I'm going to give you a general idea. What I would do is take out and I'm not going to be able to clean inside. I would normally take one shelf at a time out, wipe it all down and clean it, and then replace everything. Also, put things that you use the handiest. For example, they eat a lot of salads. So I'm sure they, and it's hard with Tara not being here for me to know what to put where, but this, I'm just doing a general thing. They eat a lot of salads, so um, this would be real handy to have the salad dressings right there. And so I would take that out. I would put this other salad dressing here. Now she's got, this is a brand new one. This might could go in the pantry, but I'll go ahead and stick that one in there for now. Um, let me take these ketchups out. And like I said, I would be wiping all of this down. Let me get the other salad dressing. And I think, did that all, Dave, that we got? I think so for now. What about that, wait, salad dressings? Yeah, I got all the salad. So now here's all the salad dressing. Also, I'm not going to fill this up a huge amount more if I can help it. Oh, here's another one. You need to be more Because. Oh, all the ranch over here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Dave. Yes, but you like, can be more so. But like the ranch over here. Yes, and have all of them together. Here's another ranch day for you. Thank you. Oh. You got that fixed? There we go. There you go. That's now, perfect. Nan's more worried about it being dirty on the bottom than she oh. is about the arrangement. But so now, but I leave a little space. See, it's not jam-packed, so if somebody grabs it in, in there, it's easy. Where if I had it packed like this to try to get it put back in, it's really hard. And kids and dad, husbands don't like fighting that. So leave a little bit of space so it's easy for them to put stuff back in. Now, like up here, I would put, um, let me take this out. I would put like maybe the um, hot sauces, something like that. This is a higher up shelf. Michael would probably get into that a little bit more in the boys. So here's the Worcestershire sauce. In the barbecue sauce, I'll either put this up here or with the, um, since it won't fit, I'll probably put it with the ketchup and mustard. Um, here's some picante sauce. That'll go up there. And what's this here? Here's another stir fry sauce. So as you can see, I'm just kind of popping things in like that. And I hope I'm not messing up the camera really bad, Dave. No, you're not. So here I would take... 
it's hard for me to work here because I can't spread out. We got a table here and everything. Normally I'd spread out, have I'd have the sink full of hot water with a little bit of Clorox in it, and I take one shelf, wipe it down, put back what belongs in there, and then move on to the next shelf. But so you I can't do that if you want. I can just go Well, it's hard kind of go back and forth. So whoops. I think Tarn Mike have been to Taco Bell too much. Look at all the packets. Sure it's all Taco Bell? It's oh, all Taco Bell. All so now I'm putting all the ketchup, mustard. Uh, I might put the horseradish sauce in here too. You have but, to pack it on the shelf. Oh, that's okay. okay. Uh, so you get the general idea of how to sort things, you know, in different categories, different uh, areas. The jelly might go down here lower where the kids could reach them. Now Tara's got the lemon juice down here on the bottom, which I like because I don't use my lemon juice very often, so having it there on the bottom where I don't get to it very much is a good idea. She's got olives in there. If I had more time, I would arrange the shelf down there where I'd put the pickle, the olives, the jalapeno peppers, all in one shelf. Now, in my refrigerator, because it's a little bit wider, I put a um, Rubbermaid turntable and I set that on one side of the shelf that the kids could see and I put the mustard ketchup, mayonnaise, I put a couple of salad dressings and um, I saw, if I had room I'd put the pickles in, on there too so that, that tur uh, they can just turn the tray and they can find the things we use quite often like the cut, uh, mustard and ketchup uh, I would put on there. So. Um, that if you have a, re, a refrigerator that's wider like mine that's really handy to do that now um i just thought of something and went out of my brain oh shoot that i was going to tell you about arranging everything uh, it might come back to me now in here i'm going to show you on this shelf okay on this shelf here yesterday and I, I didn't want to leave it in because it was pretty messy. Before all the chaos with BJ and finding out we were leaving, to, they were leaving to go to Mayo really fast, Tara had taken a roast out. And she had put it in here in the refrigerator to thaw. And she just remembered it yesterday and called me and said, you better not, probably shouldn't eat it because we weren't sure if it would be any good. But when I went in here to get it, it had thawed and there was blood everywhere in here and so I wanted to let you guys know when you take something like meat out of the refrigerator to thaw and Tara maybe does it is does this normally but things have been so hectic lately take a plate uh, you know a large dinner plate and set the meat on top of it another thing that you could do is I take double plastic bags and I set the meat inside of it you don't have to close it up but I just set the meat inside of it then as the meat thaws and um, it thaws out and that blood and stuff or juice that sometimes melts down Ew. into there. <laughs> Grossing you out, huh, Dave? You say organic juices. That's organic funny. juices, so that makes it sound better. But as the juices melt down, it'll get inside the two pla in the plastic bag. And I double the plastic bag in case one has a hole. Then when I get ready to use the meat, I take it out with the plastic bags. I set it on the counter. Leaving it in the plastic bags, I peel the plastic wrap off and take the, the saran bottom, you know, package out and lift it out and put it in, in my pan. That way I can take and leave all the plastic wrap and that stuff inside the plastic bag, tie it together, put it in my trash, and if I don't get the trash out that day for some reason, it won't smell up the trash really bad and everything's conveniently in that one mess. So I wanted to tell you about that when you thaw something out you might try to do that now here in tars you can see I've got I've got margarine one here one's back here there's a butter over there there's butter here there's another butter in there uh, I think I saw a third butter someplace but she's got like you know several different places for butter now um, what I would do for something like this, let me just wipe this. I'm sorry, guys. I know I shouldn't worry about it, but I want to wipe this off one more time. She's a germaphobe. I am not a germaphobe. Yes, As a matter of fact, are. I'm just the opposite. I just don't want it to look dirty. She's a uber germaphobe. <laughs> oh, when you wipe something off, don't just wipe it and leave it. Always take a dry rag. Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. 
to make the a dry rag on the outside of the refrigerator too. I noticed the refrigerator on the outside had a lot of streaks. People just wipe with a wet rag and think they're good to go. It took me like, oh, what was it? 10 seconds to cover an area the size of the refrigerator to just wipe it off with a dry rag. That's the difference between a shiny kitchen, you know, one that looks sparkly, clean, shiny, and one that looks clean, but there's just something about it. Always wipe every appliance in your kitchen when you can. When you wipe it down your countertop, just quickly run over with a dry rag. Okay, so now what I would do with this butter, put all like things together. They get to the butter a lot, so I think it'll be good on this shelf. I will take this package of margarine that's not open and put it towards the back. Here's a package of butter that's not open and I'll set that on top of that. Um, as a matter of fact, I might take and get to it. I will take this package of butter and set back there too. Get a little bit more room. Then the butter that's open, or margarine that's open, with the, with the opening this direction, I will put those in front of it, like this. That way, um, they don't dig way, have to dig way back in to find an open box of butter. There's enough room, I don't think you can probably see it on the camera, but there's enough room that I could put maybe one or two more packages of either butter or something else that's not open if need be stored behind it. Sorry guys, I accidentally clicked the sound down. <laughs> so do I need to repeat? There's enough... Huh? Sorry guys, <laughs> should be back on. There's enough... Um, where did it stop at, Dave? Do you know? About 30 seconds ago. 30 seconds ago? I would just start. Resetting. There's enough room now that if need be, she can put some more, a couple another other boxes of butter way behind that are unopened. And that way, as they finish eating out of these, then you can just pull the other new ones forward and just keep rotating it like that. Now, um, that's normally not in there. Now she's got had biscuits up here and she's got biscuits in here. What I would do, since we're using these every morning, I would put these biscuits the same way. You see, put them together like that. Um, this half and half should go up here with these. I'll get to these in a second maybe. But then this is the cheese drawer. So I would keep all the cheeses in there and she's got she's pretty good she's got her cheese and no oh dear <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything I was gonna say she's got her cheese and her deli meats but I just found another package of deli meats in another drawer this is an altar you realize she's got five kids and a husband so this is what's going on but see in this drawer now she's got deli meats too so keep all the deli meats right on the one side together and She's got like a uh, bronze swagger here. So try to keep all the meats together and then all the cheeses together. Why I say this is kind of important. First of all, it keeps your refrigerator organized. You're not in here searching. Do you have, I, I would love for somebody sometime to time how much of time a family spends looking for something in the refrigerator. How much time is spent? Mom, I can't find this. Can you come help me and tell me where it's at? Huh? Uh, Mom says that the second to the bottom drawer is BJ's don't st touch food, so don't mess with that. This one here? Yeah. No, I wasn't going to touch that one. Okay. I was afraid of that drawer. Chicken <laughs> So, but anyway, um, you probably spend ages with kids saying, I can't find it, I can't find it, and you have to go look for it. And so if you keep it organized like this, then you don't have to spend that time looking for stuff. And people get so frustrated cooking meals if you just organize these things a little bit like you're ready for dinner and you need to set the table you know you can walk over here grab the dressing and set it on the table you don't need to be go looking trying to dig through something to find where the ranch dressing is in the refrigerator that all takes so much time and even though this seems to take a little bit time of organizing once you get it done and you stay on top of it it takes it doesn't take any time hardly at all I also forgot to mention that um, I do this, I clean out my refrigerator the day before I go to grocery shopping. And I try to do it every time because 
doing it that way, I keep on top of it and there's very little I have to do. Sometimes I have to just wipe along here. And this is another thing. I'll just wipe, you know, the edge. and But I don't have much to even really clean most of the time. But since I do it before grocery shopping, I keep a running list, of course, of things that when I run out of them. But sometimes I don't always get things written down. Or if you have kids, they don't always tell you that it's missing. I can walk in here. And if I look and I see this is the only bottle of salad dressing sitting here in the salad dressing section, I know I need to buy salad dressing immediately. I can glance right at it. On the turntable that I had in my refrigerator with ketchup, mustard, and that type of thing, I could glance down right away. See, I can see. I don't have much ketchup in here. I probably should get another bottle of ketchup. You can just, as you're wiping and cleaning, you can glance at these things. I don't have any American cheese, so, you know, maybe I need to get, when you straighten this drawer out, before you go grocery shopping, you can see what you have in there. And so it saves time uh, doing that type of stuff. Now, I know this is a bowl of, I think, fruit, salt, fruit or something that we got like two tablespoons in. Wait, so no, that's, that's not... That's a potato salad. But we only got like two tablespoons, and it's from, I think, Saturday, so I'm no, not sure if it's so good. Graduation yeah, from thing, Emily's yeah. graduation. But it was see, delish. We got, what is this? <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't say what in the world is it. It looks like a potato. But that's another thing why I do it the night before I go to the grocery store. I'm, I'm, I can say, oh, this looks like a yummy something that we had the other night, so I'll set it out for dinner tonight. And I can get rid of all these containers of these different things that are in here. And you set up and that, oh, uh, Dave, you're yawning. Is Nan boring you? No, I'm just really And tired. so you can get rid of the different things in your refrigerator and then have more room for the other uh, stuff. Now, I was going to show you here. I, I don't know of anybody else but me, but I, there surely has to be somebody else. This is a glass, Tara has glass shelves. She loves her glass shelves. And I'm just wiping the front of it just to, but I don't use, I had a refrigerator once with glass shelves and I hated it because it stays gooky all the time. There's and just, you can see the gook easily. Yeah, you can see it and just, I didn't clean this right, but you know, it just stays gooky constantly. I love to have a refrigerator with the racks. Uh, just the metal racks that you, for shelving instead of the glass because um, I, ne I never clean anything like this. I don't have to. There's no gooky shelves. And Tara, once, I think she, it was her that said, well, it all falls to the bottom shelf. But even if it does, I just have one shelf to uh, clean. I don't have one, two, three, four shelves. I only have one shelf to clean. And I've never noticed stuff falling through that badly. So that when I go to the store, all I have to do is just wipe this one little ledge. Usually it's all I clean on my refrigerator because the racks very rarely uh, don't get things gook on them. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think if I covered everything that I was going to cover. I know it's not spotless clean and I would love to show you with it all organized and maybe we could Friday show it all cleaned up or something. but. Um, See, here's another jar of pickles. They would have been hollering, where are the pickles? And it's behind the milk, you know? And so you need to really keep, and I brought my grandkids pop. Tar doesn't always get too much pop, but I brought them pop for that, for special treat. Uh, keep like, she's got picante sauce here, which is fine, that bottle will only fit there. But keep the juices and the milks all, you know, together on one shelf and, and like that. Another thing, oh, I just thought of another thing and I can't remember now. You can tell I'm going brain dead. You know, if you can, pour this into a smaller container if you have to, or something like that. I think we'll quit now and maybe take some questions of what I did. But you can see, look what, now this is a little bit closer together. I like to leave a little bit of space because that way if I need to get something back here, I can easily move this over here and grab back here. So, ah, ah, yes, sir. Stalling, you stalling can. words. You I don't know what to say. Stalling. stalling, stalling. Stalling. There's Jack, my love. He wanted to be in the show and say, Hi, Mom and Dad, Uncle Dave, Auntie Shayla, BJ Ellie. 
Did you say it to them? Ooh, whipped cream. Yeah, whipped cream. So nice. anyway, you know, I like to leave a little bit of space in there so people don't have to paw quite so much and that. Oh, I know what I was going to say. You're probably thinking, how in the world do I get my family to do this? My kids, my husband will not do this. But you'd be surprised. You may have to go in several times and redo it over and over. But once they get used to the dressing being here, they, they'd automatically more often than not put it back. So anyway, so what I'll do is um, I think we'll stop there. And if you guys have any questions, I'll go over and sit down and we'll start answering some questions. Hold up, guys. Wait, should I rearrange stuff now? Sure, go in the other room. Oh, no. Yeah, but you can take it in the room. Should I rearrange stuff? You now? can rearrange stuff, Dave. So. Okay, guys, hold up. Hold we're your just, ears. We're Make just sure rearranging. Dad said hi that he loves you. Hold up, I'm rearranging the camera and the mic. Just a second. Hold up. I think we may have to wait till here we, let me make sure this looks good. Push it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, you have that live. Time for the minute to be Maybe here, you right? better wait till we're done, okay. and then I'll help you with it more. Oh, sorry, Jack. Nan covered you good, okay. didn't she? Does it taste good? Well, at least you'll be clean tonight going to bed. You'll have yourself totally licked like the cat does. <laughs> mm. Make sure that makes you clean, though. I was going to, do we have any questions yet, Dave? Hold up. Hold up. Chill. You want to turn the fan over towards Nan over there? Whoa, way. who cleaned the kitchen? Mom says this is this <laughs> lady while we were on the computer all day. Um, who cleaned? Oh, I didn't mean to. Here, sorry. can you scoot it over here a little bit closer to Nan or not? Because I, I can I maybe think, help. I don't think I can with the. You can't? Not with the internet cord. I don't think. Okay, any questions yet? Carver, like every pack, always adds cookies to the glass shelving. Yeah, it does. You know, that's why I don't like the glass shelving, because it does hey, add Dad. different. Hi, everybody. You should call Let's them see. and put them on speaker, so then they can be on the show. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay, what questions do we have here, Dave? Did you see anything? You're doing fine, Dave. Thank you, Julie from Georgia. Um, let me check to I can't make sure see. I didn't miss anything. I can't see with my glasses. I can't see without my glasses. Man, you're really blind. Jill, I'm in UK. Oh, very late. Oh, Kimberly, thank you for staying up if it's very late. You want to turn the fan jack over towards Nan a little bit, please? Uh, I huh? It feels nice. Uh, let's see. Look good, Dave. You look good. My hands are weak sometimes, so I consider this as a sort of thing as I would rather bend down. Yeah. I'm trying to find any questions. Any questions? Love my blouse. Thank you. You know what? This blouse, it's really strange. I don't usually go for a lot of floral, but this has been the handiest blouse to wear for all different kinds of things. Dave, you do a good job. Thank you guys for the encouragement, even though we know we're not doing that. Good. Yes, Joanne, I would love to have a good organizer because I organize some, but I, I always wanted somebody to organize my stuff. Um, oh, mom's wanting to know where her stuff is. <laughs> I, I didn't get rid of any of your stuff. I just hit it all. Oh, so wait, the kitchen what? looks clean? How do you know we didn't just slap a background, a picture on them? Yeah, that's what we did. We took a big picture and we just slapped it up there. Actually, the house has been staying. The kids have been really, really good, Jill. No, she threatened us. She was like, if you get it. Thank in. you, Pam. <laughs> Mom was like, I mean, Nan was like, if you get it oh, dirty. Oh, now I was going to tell you, okay. um, oh, no. Jill, how is the freezer looking? Well, <laughs> Interesting. Well, I was kind of afraid to open the freezer up because I wasn't sure what was going to fall out and attack me. <laughs> it was actually so, not that much. No, it's not too bad. Tara really does try to go through hers every once in a while. Um, one thing I was going to tell you guys, too. <laughs> can you holler if there's a question that comes up while I tell them? I'm on reading. BJ, what happened was we were really excited because he got in and had his first doctor's appointment today. They said the guy was really, really nice, listened to everything they had to say, and, uh, and said he would start, he made, uh, told him to take, I think it was, Tara said, three different appointments they were having to different doctors. Well, they had them kind of spread out. They were going to one, I think, on Friday and Monday or something, but then there were, or I forget what it was, how it was, but anyway... 
one of them was going to be June 29th, one of the appointments. And so we're trying not to panic to think, oh my goodness, do they need to stay there or come back home? Uh, but they told them, they said, you know, if you go every day to the waiting room and sit and wait, sometimes they'll have a cancellation and you could get in. And, but we're still thinking, you know, they'd have to get up every day first thing and go and sit and wait and wait and wait. Well, after BJ got his blood work done, they went over, I may be telling the story slightly wrong, but uh, they went over. They can correct it if. Yeah, they wrong. can correct it on there if I don't get it. I've had so many different things to tell today. But they uh, they got over to the, uh, they went over to the place, to the waiting room, just to maybe start waiting as soon as he got his blood work done today. <laughs> what? I can't cook any kettle corn? No, you can't cook your kettle corn. And so they went and. It's um abuse. Abuse. Oh, listen, I made him mow the yard this morning. It's what a abuse. terrible man. So um, they were going to just start waiting today for the appointment, and they got in there, and the gal said, no way we can get you in. We got seven other people. And I think Tara oh, said another lady came out or something and was chatting with her. Come to find out, she said, I just now got a cancellation for Friday. So they're so excited. So they're 20, June 29th one is on Friday, I think. And then they had another one that they finally got changed over to Tuesday. So now they have like Friday, Monday, and Tuesday, all their appointments right together. So they maybe won't have to be gone too much longer than just a little bit over a week. So we're kind of excited that that, that worked out so good for them. We were so excited. So Jamie wants you to go through these. Oh, Jamie, you want me to go through the uh, how to clean your kitchen in seven easy steps? Yeah. Is there books for sale? Thank you for asking, Dolphin Man, because I need to say um, that again. The Going to Mayo sale is on, it's all of our, I think it's all of our e-books or a bunch of I'll them. I'll post in links. Gay's post in links for um, $10, and it's through June 3rd, which is Saturday, I think. June 3rd. She's got Thursday on here, but I think it's through June 3rd, whatever day that is. So it's going to Mayo sell ten dollars for all of our ebooks, or I think most of our ebooks, whatever. Twelve ebooks, but not 12, all of them. Twelve ebooks. You get twelve ebooks for ten dollars, which what is a the really sale good. Maker said. Is that what the sale maker said? Mom, Mom said. <laughs> not only did she give me a write notes for, but she's emailing me on here too she's with comments. Not emailing. She's e commenting. Oh, e commenting. Excuse me, Dave. Um, also, if you weren't here earlier. They're going to have a, a meet-up in Rochester on Saturday at 3 o'clock. And after the show is over, any of you that are in Rochester, if you even if you can't come to the meet-up, if you could suggest a place where they could have the meet-up because they're not familiar. So after the show, go into YouTube comments or go to our website, livingonadime.com, click on Contact, and uh, write in a place that you think would be good for a meetup on Saturday at 3 o'clock. So I hope I got it all right. And, and so Jamie wants me to do our, okay, in our Dining on a Dime. Oh, just like Mom. Dining, Dining on a Dime. dime. Page. <laughs> Page. 396. 96. 396. Clean your kitchen in Clean seven your easy steps. Clean your kitchen in seven easy steps. We don't, we don't always push this, but... We have a whole big section on just cleaning in here. How to clean your stove top, how to clean your microwave, how to clean your refrigerator. Is that what Jamie wants is how to clean the refrigerator no, or the clean? Just the oh, kitchen. just the kitchen. Because mom was like, how is it so pretty? Yeah, a and it's just people. to clean your kitchen in seven easy steps. Put all the dirty dishes in the dishwasher or fill the sink with hot soapy water and stick them in there to start soaking while you start on the rest of the kitchen. Wipe off the counters after you get the dishes in the sink or dishwasher. Uh, washer. Wipe off the counters and the tables with hot soapy water and dry them off. Uh, here I have sweep the floor. Now you don't have to do that every day if the if your floor isn't too bad. Wash the dishes that have been soaking or turn the dishwasher on. Wipe down around the sink after the dishes are done and take a dish towel and dry them off. Dry the faucets off. Put out a clean dish rag and towel and take out the trash. Those are just seven things. Put all the dirty dishes in the dishwasher, wipe off your countertops, sweep the floor, wash the dishes, wipe down the faucets,
put out a clean dish cloth and take out the trash. Is that eight? I counted wrong. Wait, 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 what? <laughs> I, I, say, it, I, it again? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't. But anyway, so it's really, if you, it probably, if you stay on top of your kitchen, it wouldn't even take you hardly 15 minutes to do this each morning and get it together. Okay, do we have any more questions? people watching on YouTube. Oh, right do we have any more um, questions? I am checking. You're checking? Uh, oh, I, I asked mom something. Let's see. Oh. What kind of place are they looking for? I have no idea. Oh, oh, oh place for the, the meetup. Meet I think it would be like a, uh, uh, oh, like, like a restaurant, restaurant that could maybe hold a few people, has a room to hold a few people, like uh, a, Den not a Denny's, what, I don't know. Oh, like Parkins? Parkin Parkins, Perkins, Perkins. P-E-R-K-I-N-S. Oh. Uh, it's like... Let's see. If you know what Perkins is, it's like a dining. If you don't know yeah, what any, it is, it's maybe like, a dining. like any kind of a restaurant that would have an area. Even it doesn't even have to have a special area. Just another, maybe a bigger area where you could go and everybody meet together. Yeah. Uh, that type of thing, or even this time of year, you, they could almost meet up a, at a park if you wanted to. Everybody bring their own uh, pop or something to drink with them, and um, and you could meet at a park. So. Let's see. Oh, thank you guys for saying we're doing okay because Dave and I, we were a nervous wreck all day, weren't we, Dave? I am already in there. <laughs> oh, we have, uh -oh. wow, we only have 10 <coughs> minutes left. Yes. Let's see, I got, let's see, any more? I'm trying to read for your questions. Maybe a park for a potluck. Yeah, that's what Tara's saying. Um... Yes, please hit the like bu button, everybody. Hit the like button and subscribe so then we can um, get more let's money see. And stuff. Is there a particular way that you organize food that is, whoops, is more temperature sensitive than nonsense? Since okay, is there a particular way to organize my refri who who wrote that? Um, Sharon. Sharon. Um, is there a way to organize the food in the refrigerator for more sensitive? foods um you know that would spoil faster you know really i i've never ever done that i've never really worried about that even you because could, but once okay. you open the refrigerator out most of the ref most of it's affected so i don't think i suppose at the back you could put some things further to the back where it'd stay colder longer like if you were worried about something but you know we kind of forget about things people never used to have refrigerators and like milk, people worry about the milk sitting on the counter. You can sit, leave the milk sitting on the counter a long time. They used to have milkmen that would sit the milk out on the front porch and it would just sit there for hours till people would go out and get their milk. So this stuff normally doesn't spoil as fast as what you think. So just open the normal opening and closing of the refrigerator doesn't have that big of effect. I mean slightly maybe but i'm not sure if it's worth worrying about whether you're where you place the stuff probably stuff in the door would get the heat a little bit more uh so i wouldn't put things in there like potato salad in there maybe but you know um i don't think just our refrigerators nowadays i know they have certain ones they're coming out with with where they have certain sections that you keep the milk and that that you go to more frequently which is nice but you know, that was another thing I didn't mention. Be careful on getting refrigerators that have a thousand bells and whistles on them. What happens is you have, um, oh, I thought you were hollering. Them. What happens is you have more expensive parts, lots more parts to go wrong. You have to pay a repairman more for fixing this complicated refrigerator. So I would go as simple as I could. I don't even have a water dispenser, although they're nice. But like everybody, I think everybody knows that water dispenser gets moldy. you got to clean the outside. There's usually a puddle in front of it often if you have kids and that type of thing. So keep it as simple as you can. It costs less, too, to get a refrigerator. It's Granny simple. Dean says, what are you doing Friday? What are we doing and Friday? That is a very good question. That is a good question. Could We've always... got some things. Dave's dying to do his popcorn and do popcorn seasonings. Popcorn. <laughs> always just stir the <laughs> stir they have gone through, I had a whole container of popcorn. There's and no what, since Monday, they've gone through the whole container of popcorn. Or Dave, are you watching questions for me? No, Let's sitting. see. 
Got one. Um, Found one. Same with eggs. Yeah, eggs. You know, especially homegrown eggs. You can leave those out, and they don't they don't get bad that fast. Even potato salad. People don't realize you can leave it out two hours before it even starts to spoil. So, um, Jamie, yes, I'm feeling better, even though I have the throat, I used to have throat issues. He, he is. He's taking his antibiotics. We're doing really good. But I have to eat, like, a full pizza myself. Oh, uh, who was it? Um, bandana, uh, Grandma said sh you like the filtered water from your refrigerator. And I don't like the hundreds of dollars used for the water filters. You know what I do for that? And it does, it seems to do the same effect. I take and keep a water jug in my refrigerator with a spigot. When it sets like that for uh, like overnight or whatever, all the chemicals, everything just disappears out of it. My water in my refri refrigerator tastes 10 times better than any filtered water or even bottled water that I've ever tasted. Uh, just because, and it's icy cold, it's really cold. And I think that's why people like the taste of bottled water. Is It's not that it's any different from regular tap water. It's just that it's been sitting on the shelf. So you can sit any water in your refrigerator. She literally just puts it in a thing from the faucet and then she just lays it in her refrigerator. It's set it in the refrigerator and after it, the chlorine, everything evaporates out and it just disappears and it's really good. So, and it doesn't cost the tap, tap water is the cheapest. I don't mess with filters or, um, you know, purifiers or anything like that. And now some people really want the pure stuff, I guess, but, it seems to be really good and it tastes really cold and it's like a crisp stream type thing. Um, let's see. Yes, Sarah, that's true. You fa Have you found that to be true too, that it lets it evaporate out? Uh, when you get here, we need to, let's see. What other questions? I'm sorry, everybody. I'm sorry I'm not looking at the camera, but I'm trying to read any questions we have here. Dave's looking at pizza questions and stuff. I'm just teasing. I, I I'm teasing. having dinner tonight mixed with salt, sauteed pot, uh, peppers. Oh, Denise is having eggs tonight for dinner. Oh, you know, that's good with sauteed peppers in it. When we're done, when we're done. Um, you know, I love it when you guys put your menus up here of what you're having for the evening because I'm really bad. I love reading romance bookies and historical novels and that type of thing. Not clean romance bookie books, but I love it when they talk about the menus and they list what the gal's eating or what they're having for dinner because it gives me ideas. And I, so I like it when you guys put on here what you're having for supper because it gives all of us ideas to try something new and different, you know, and gives us more ideas. Don't forget the chocolate popcorn, Joanne says. Uh, uh, if only I like I don't chocolate. know if we'll do popcorn for sure. Tara may want us to do something else, but we're going to try to do uh, beverages sick. maybe or something. Unless you're sick. We'll have to see, yeah. Jack looks like Jill. <laughs> they said you look like Nan. You're good looking like Nan, huh? I love breakfast for supper at night. I really do. Yeah, I have a turtle. Oh, shit. <laughs> Dave and Joshua. Um, you love pizza? The usual have pizza on the weekend. Yeah, we have been living. I don't tell their mom, but we've been living off of pizza. You know she's on, right? We don't tell mom that we're living off of pizza. We're down to our and last ranch. pizza. And ranch. That's why we have so many ranch <laughs> Pizza and cinnamon biscuits. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, cinnamon biscuits. We're eggs. doing eggs for dinner. And ramen noodles. Oh, made it, uh, Andrea, Andrea said she's doing eggs. Made a casserole with eggs, butter biscuits, sausage, mushrooms. Oh, yum. Mild chili and cheddar cheese. Add a side of fruit. Oh, perfect. Really good. I love breakfast at night. They're really simple and really easy to do. Um... That sounds so good. I missed over there. Was there something over there, Dave? Wait, what? No, thanks, Jamie. We don't need no dinner. We, we bought too many pizzas. <laughs> We're just being lazy, aren't we, Dave? You want us to do uh, 
Rainy, you want us to do the popcorn and seasonings Rene. on Friday. Renee? I mean, Renee. I, I don't know. Renee? Renee. Are we pronouncing? I'm sorry, guys, if I do your name wrong. It, it, we're, we're Americans. We mess it up. Oh, my dolphin, man. You made popcorn balls for all the kids at church. You, oh, that takes a lot. Of, that was a lot of work. Oh. I love popcorn balls. Let's see, we had chicken me. salads for $1.12 a person from Diane. Mom's having chipotle. Hard boiled eggs. Uh, let's see. I don't have my glasses on. I can't read the computer with my glasses on or with my glasses off. So that's why I'm having trouble, Can guys. Can you try too? Oh. <laughs> let's see. Anything else? I oh, I saying. know. I did want to say tell you about this, too. Uh, we didn't get a couple of questions answered. I don't know if you guys are on here. I didn't notice to see if... if uh, Heather asked, uh, favorite meals to get more than one meal out of. We've done several places we've talked about how we take a roast or a chicken or something else and make it in more than one meals. Um, actually... I don't have any specifically favorite ones. You might check out the website because I have on livingonadime.com and write in menus or whatever. We have lots of different, we cover this in a lot of areas is what I'm trying to say. So one, of, one good thing is like with chicken, I'll make chicken salad or I mean chicken with rice and maybe some peas and sliced tomatoes one night. Well, that's always good because then you can take the leftover chicken and take this? a few pieces, <laughs> a few pieces of, and put it with the rice. If you had leftover rice or make extra rice, put uh, pieces of chicken in with the rice, add a creamy chicken soup, broccoli, cheese, and you've got a casserole then for the second meal. You could also make chicken and noodles and um, chicken soup. No, Chick huh? Chicken, um, chick, you could grind it up for chicken sandwiches. So you can take almost any meat like that and just find chicken recipes. And we list even in our book, in our book, Dining on a Dime Cookbook. Dining on a Dime Cookbook. <laughs> we have a whole section. These are grandma glasses. If you happen to have Dining on a Dime, and I can't find it here, an index that's a leftover index. And so in this index, we show list. Uh, to give you ideas of recipes from the book, like if you have leftover chicken, then we have a list of different uh, chicken recipes that you can use those leftover chickens in, chicken in, or roast. Huh? Oh, okay, that's okay. Do we have any more questions? So we have them listed in here, which makes it real easy if you do a roast, then you go back here, look under roast, and we have a lot of different meals that you can find in there. Let's see. How do you get a thing of the book can somebody pop in a connection for the book well, for Link. homestead uh Tess, tessie let's see yeah do we just post in the link yes oh my lynette you're yeah. having uh tri-tip tri -tip and, and bacon, bacon wrapped asparagus salad with red smashed garlic potatoes and crunchy parmesan. Oh my, Tara would love that. She loves asparagus. That would be really, she would really like that. Is Dave my grandson? Yes, Angela. I wish I wasn't. Oh, and I'm glad you're here, Angela. Welcome. Um, Dave is my grandson. He, that's where he gets his good looks from, you know, it's from his name. So, uh, what else are we having here? Oh, mm. dumplings? You take dolphin and you fry dumplings in onions and butter. Oh my, I've never heard of that, but that sounds oh, let good. Let me scroll this back up so you can see people. So I can see some comments. You're going to scroll it up so I can see Why some things. Why won't that work? I don't know. I have over. Uh oh, it said we were are frozen. We frozen? I don't know. Are we frozen, guys? Are we back, oh, Dave? The computer, it's not even running. Why is it not doing anything? What's Let's see. Hey, are he we looks still like alive? my t twin, Lonnie. <laughs> yeah. Mm. 
Are we still on, guys? You know, wouldn't that be fun if we were close enough that we could just go to each person's house that sounded good for dinner every time? They would have a fit, but that would be fun. What is... Oops. Oops, sorry. He looks like you. He looks like my twin. You should have seen us the other night. We both had our flannel shirts on, but it's too hot today for Nan to wear a flannel shirt. Bond's middle name is James. Yep, and it his is. His last name is Kevin Owen. Bond Let's James see. Kellen. Thank Guess you. What her name is. You're not going to tell my name, Dave, are you? Fine here. Do? Oh, okay. So we're doing fine what now. What do if I do, huh? You'd have to mow the yard again tomorrow. Uh, you know what Dave said to me? To this, he said earlier. He said, "Nan, when I told him that Mom may have to be there till June 29th, he said, Nan, you're wearing me out." He said, "If I'm you stay here very long, naps. long, you're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to start taking naps." <laughs> oh, am I cruel to you? Please give your post office box. Can somebody put our post office I box address? What it was? I think Mom knows it. Mom um, knows it. Um, 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 let's see. Is that? wine on the counter behind you nope we don't have any wine in the house hmm i wonder what she's talking about what? we've got an herb herb bottle over there but nope we Wait, don't drink so it can't be wine because we don't drink well it could be the herb bottle over there it but could be the herb it? bottle i don't see anything we're not drunkards. <laughs> Hold up your oh. cookbook. Living on a diet. Your jo my jo mojo. Oh, my mojo juice. Where is my mojo juice? Here's some. Here's a beautiful cookbook. I might be the juice bottle that I have. Oh, hand me my mojo juice there, Dave. Jack, know that right there in front of you. The black one. The yeah. Well, no, like this drugs. here <laughs> is called. It, it's not drugs. Moxie. Moxie. I think is what it's called, but I it's started drink it, drinking it. I take about two tablespoons a day, and I started it about five, six, seven years ago, and it's it's like blueberries, Net strawberries, what? Natural energy and fat burning complex, natural joint and anti-inflammatory health complex. Yeah, natural well, it just has a bunch of juices support. like ackerberry juice and... Uh, strawberry juice and that type of thing basically an energy drink and it seems to help my joints and gives me a little bit of energy so what's my jill amy wants to, hi amy t <laughs> from australia uh what what's my favorite thing to cook for the grandbabies to spoil them can of corn you know i have that's i don't know if that's my favorite thing I just let them pick out whatever they want usually, and so far we've I've cooked, let's see, three batches of kettle corn. I popped every day since I've been here. They've been eating the. That's what kettle and now corn. I'm for, have to so you'll know what kettle out. corn is. I take regular popcorn, not microwave popcorn, but regular popcorn kernels, and my poor pot is looking so dirty and awful. But um, I take regular popcorn kernels and I put some oil and we might show that to you with sugar in it and Let's do it on Friday. Nan wants to make sure they have a good sugar high and I pop popcorn it makes like kettle corn and so they've been having like batches and batches so that's probably the best rocks of so, sugar on this. um let's see uh we have 150 left what are you hinting that we should go off now dining on a dime oh 150 dining yeah. I see. For people, to uh, order. for people to order. I have a turtle. Garlic cheddar biscuits from Dining on a Dime stop. with ham. Oh, Paula, that sounds good. Oh, those garlic cheddar biscuits with ham would be really good. New potatoes, green bean soup, fresh produce. Wow, that sounds good. What was the name of that juice again? What is this called? Well, Moxie? It's, well, she... It's this stuff. It's called Moxie. It's up yeah. I have to form. order it online, and I I could get. I don't know if I have the information it with me, but good. I could. Oh yeah, it tastes really good. As a matter of fact, it's hard not to drink the whole bottle, but um, I don't know. It helps my joints. I don't have Is that any why joint you have those problem. Tiny bottles at your house, where they're like the little tiny the glass tiny things. Yeah, I have a little tiny. It looks like a shot glass, but it's not. It's just like a little two ounce 
bottle of stuff. It usually so comes with that because that's all you really need. for. And why I'm hesitating in this, I took this for years and years, and last year they changed the formula the uh, a little bit, and so I've been hesitating to recommend it until I take it enough to um, know. I think it helped stop my hair falling out a little bit because I had a lot of trouble with my hair falling out in clumps. She was like bald. But it took a while. Now, I had to take it for like a year or so before I noticed that my hair would stop falling out and that type of thing. So, let's see. I've never tasted cattle corn. You haven't, Jamie? Oh, it's so good. It's like almost like a caramel corn type of thing. As a matter of fact, if it burns ever so slightly, it has a caramel flavor to it. No, Jamie, I'm not going to learn anything about Sharon. I'm not going, yeah. I'm not sharing it. Uh, I'm not sure who mentioned that cherries are good for you to drink. Uh, cherries, cherries are, are good. good for you. Rainy. Uh, I mean, rainy. This might even have some cherry juice in it. It has like several different berries and stuff. And it has mega amounts of vitamins, different vitamins. There's like um, 80 different parts. Can you type the name of your juice in the comments? I'll tell you what, um, I'll try to at least on Friday have the information for you and type it in if I can find it. I didn't, since I'm not at home, I don't have all the everything. Where do I get it from? I, I ordered it online, so I'd have to give you the people that I ordered it from and, and see. Um, Where do you get that from? I ordered it online, but I can't remember the place I it ordered it from. It smells so good, I want to have it. You could try it if oh, you want. Right. Is there sage juice in it? I don't know. I don't think there's sage juice in it. I don't think. Uh, oh, you have birthday presents for the boys? <laughs> oh, they will love that, Jamie. <laughs> Jill, teach Dave how to cook, like cheeseburger rolls. Yes, I should teach him how to cook. What did I do? I didn't know oh, how to cook those. I, I did do, teach him how to do cinnamon biscuits. They learned how to do cinnamon biscuits now. No, Mom already taught us that, too. Well, Jack didn't seem to know. To, oh. No, I did. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you guys did good. We just then. do it in a Dave, way. how is your throat? How is your throat doing? They want to know. Pretty good. Oh, my goodness. Smell. I mean, even the smell just helps you. Even the smell hey, look, helps you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. There's several different places you can get them from. So, That's Teresa actually, just put it up there. I don't know. On the Facebook side. I could put it up on the YouTube. That's what's that. Um, but. Use the Moxie juice. Um, let's see. Amy, it's a secret recipe. Maybe she should teach you to keep it a secret. What's the secret recipe of, of mine? I don't know. I missed that. Always good for boys to know how to cook. Yes, boys should know how to cook. And actually, do either or. Boys and... Um, boys and girls need to know all different jobs. Tar, she took... Um, auto mechanics in school so she could change the oil on her car if she needed to and she knew how, knows how to change a tire and that type of thing. Tara has her kid, well I had my kids too, David and Tara, they did, oh, do I have to do the mean Ow. mom look? Oh, I'm gonna be so, hmm, do I need to do the mean mom look? Could I do it as well as mom? <laughs> She would love to teach Tracy's to visit son. Australia. What am I teaching? Oh, my gingerbread cookies. Oh, I know. Everybody wants that recipe. I feel so bad that I don't give it out. Um, Amy, your husband's a great cook. That's my criteria. Ellie keeps wanting to know if Nan's going to get married again or if I would get married again. He has to know how to cook. That's one of the one of the things. Has to know how to. Oh, mom's hollering at you guys. Wait, where? Oh, where? no, it's Nan. Is Nan supposed to be mean and cruel to you? Uh, did somebody ask when? Oh, Mom put it on there. Yes, we do We do the live stream on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 4.30 Mountain Time. If there was a question. Uh, Unless we don't Jack know. is bored, and Jack is very tired. Nan has been getting up about 5.30 every morning since Nan has been here. Jack goes to and sleep at 8 o'clock and then wakes up at 5.30. He's been going to sleep later than on his summer hours instead of school hours. Boy. And he's 
kind of sick. He's been coughing all day. So I'm Nan's been strep throat. pouring medicine down him. And making him drink colostrum. Let's see. Do we have any more questions? Is it time nope. to wrap and roll up? And Seems like I, we need to go. Uh, check, stop. Check, 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 check. No. Don't feel bad, Jill. I have the recipe of 7-Up cake that I won't give out. <laughs> Denise, that's good. I guess we all have one recipe we don't give out. Uh, Linda, I don't, I don't know. This, that may be the, oh, the moxicillin one. I don't, can't remember who the people were that I got it from. So once again, we're having our Going to don't Mayo stop. sale. 12 books for ebooks for $10. Uh, the sale's going uh, on till June the 3rd. There's going to be a meetup in Rochester with Tar and Mike on Saturday at 3 o'clock. If you're in Rochester, after the show ends, go on to YouTube and write up in the comments if you know of a place that we could go to. Everyone and loves then, the Minecraft. Uh, or go onto the website, livingonadime.com, at contact. Click contact and write in there a space. And to go, and tomorrow they'll, they'll do... Uh, Tara and Michael put on there where they're going to meet at and everything tomorrow. Yeah. On Facebook, I think they said, and YouTube, I think is where they're going to put that. So, I guess if there's no more questions. Everyone apparently enjoys Minecraft. Jack is getting tired, and you guys have been so patient and wonderful with this because Dave and I were scared to death to do this because what if we blow the whole thing and nobody ever comes back again? What would happen? Mom and Dad would shoot us. So Whatever. Anyway, I would be like... thank you, everybody, for joining us. And you know what? Your prayers have helped. I mean, you don't think it made a difference to the fact that they don't have to wait till the 29th. Sure, okay. It was your prayers that helped us all the way. So thank you very much for all your prayers for BJ and everything. So Aww. we'll see you Friday at 4.30 Mountain Time. So bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, Tor and Mike. Facebook is gone and YouTube. Bye.